Hey, and welcome to this week's lesson with our artist that we're studying, Miss Berth Morozo. And today we're going to be doing a portrait. Here we have her two portraits, one that she painted herself and one that her brother-in-law, Manet, painted. Not Monet, but Manet. Check out my video of how I introduce the artist and share all the fun connections with the Impressionist artist during that time and have some visual aids that go along with that for you to use in your lesson. So for today, we're going to need a large sheet of manila paper. It almost really doesn't fit in my screen all the way. I've been sequestered to the basement to film now, so we're making that work. Okay. Here we have a very famous painting of her that her brother-in-law did. And that's the one that's also on the artist card. And then here's one that she did and how she loves those brush-like, um, sketch-like strokes. So make sure to show your students this and that it doesn't have to be these crisp lines, that there's a lot of movement going on in here. We are going to be doing similar structures from here using this black and then maybe popping a little flower um, on the lapel or the on the dress, depending on if you do a male or female, and working on some features. We're gonna try to keep it simple and also be teaching the students about more about the placement and proportions of the face without getting too complicated. There is a master's level video that will go a little bit more in depth, but we're just gonna keep it simple. We've got what, 20 minutes to really execute these by the time we get everything set out. So we're going to do an oval for our shape of our face here. And it's gonna be about the size of our hand. So if you want to put a dot, I'm gonna do a little bit darker color just so you can see. If you need to put a dot to help give guidelines to the student, then feel free to do that. Do that. If they do a really large head, it is okay. If they do a really small head, like it's okay. Let them just go with it and then they can have a larger hat. Because remember, this is impressionist. This isn't exactly what she looked like. I have a, a photograph of her in the visual aid packet. So you can look at that. And that this is, we see a lot of movement and different things, but this is not an exact picture of her. And so this is not going to be an exact reflection of what we look like or what she looks like. So let's get to that oval. So we're gonna do our oval and they can go around a few times like this. All right, so there we have the shape of our head and I'm using like a light to medium pressure. I'm not pressing down really hard. And then we're going to put the eyes on for our next feature. We're gonna do two white ovals and when we look at the head, our eyes are actually in the middle of our head. A lot of times we put them a lot higher thinking that's where they should be. But if we measure from the top of our head, like where our hair is, all the way to our chin, our eyes are approximately in the middle. So we're gonna do two ovals here in the middle. And these don't have to be exact. We're just, all right. So there we've got our two ovals to represent our eyes. I'm gonna take a brown. She appeared to have brown eyes and I'm going to do a little C and a backward C to make up her pupil. The pupil is a circle, but we don't see the entire pupil when we look at someone unless they're frightened and their eyes are very wide. So we're going to do a half C. It's not a full C, just kind of a curve and then another curve like so to make up the iris and then we color those in. So whatever's inside the middle there, that's what we're gonna color. All right, and then let's take our black for the pupil and we're going to press down in the middle there, press down. If you need to have a scrap sheet of paper for the students, cause sometimes they may get extra colors, then you can do that and they can kind of clean off the 
the pastels or test it out because sometimes there's dark browns or blues that can be a little tricky to know what color it is. All right, so now we're going to take the flesh color back again and you're welcome to do, there's different flesh colors, so whatever the student chooses. And we're going to um, color it all in. If you have time, then we can do some water at the end to kind of wake it up, but we're just doing all the flesh tones on here. Going around the eyes. If I go over the eyes, that's okay. If you look at some of these brush strokes here, you can actually see like where her brush strokes were. So we're gonna color all of that in. All right, and then we're gonna draw the ears. So we have two eyes and our ears. Our ears, the top of our ears are at our eyes. And this is where you could use this sheet if you'd like. It could be a good handout to, for them to take with them. And so we're gonna do starting at the top and then kind of looping down, just kind of come out. And there's lots of different shape ears. And they're not exactly symmetrical, just like our ears are not exactly symmetrical in their shape, most likely. All right, so then halfway between my eyes and my chin is going to be my nose. I'm gonna take a darker color and I'm going to do these same shapes that I did here with the eyes, but I'm gonna do it a little bit smaller for the nose. So about halfway between the eyes and the chin, and I'm gonna stay inside these pupils, kind of like right here where the iris is, I'm going to do a little C and then another little backward C for the nose. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. We're giving the impression that the nose is there. And then we're going to do the lips. Halfway between the nose and the chin is going to be our lips. I'm gonna do like a little V in between here. And then our lips come out to about where our irises are. And this is something to practice and faces can be very challenging. So just keep practicing with it. All right. Now we're going, this is what you can also blend in other colors if you wanna do that. Um, but I'm sure with the younger ones, it's not, they're not gonna to wanna to be doing a lot of blending. But when we have the water on there, it just kinda of helps. I just couldn't help it. Just had to get some other flesh tones in there. All right. All right, we've gotta put some more features on her. So next we're going to do the hats. We'll come back later and do the hair, but we're gonna do the hat first. She has a very large hat. Looks like probably a bow and maybe some feathers going to the side. So let me get both of these in picture. Here's how you can do the male version. Let's see if we've got both of those in the picture here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a curve on the head. The hat is sitting on the head and we're going to do a curve coming over the edge. And we're gonna do a line up and up on the side. And basically we're doing like a curved rectangle. If you'd like to do the male version, then you can do the top hat. Female version, then we can look at her hat and we can just kind of follow these shapes that we see here and play with that. So it kind of goes up, it goes over. Maybe this is some big bow. And then we've got the feathers maybe over here. And they bump down on this side like that. You can create your own hat, whatever style you would like. Now it is attached to her head. And so we see like this black ribbon coming down and coming from behind her ear. And now let's put on the collar. And I think you can do this for the male or the female. We're just gonna give them an all black, very 
like a very um, formal attire here. So we need to do their necks so we know where to put that. So let's, we're gonna come to where her eyes are and we're gonna draw the neck there. Not at the inside of her eyes. If her neck's too skinny, it won't be able to hold her head up. But if it's too wide, then it's just gonna kinda look funny. So we're gonna come like to the edge of the pupils and we're gonna come down a little bit and curve out. So there we have her neck and then we're gonna swoop over to her shoulder and just let it fall off the page like so, all right? In the upper level video, I went and we put in this V and we did the white shirt and did the flush here, flush tone there for her skin. And the younger ones, I would just keep it all black. Just keep it simple for that. But we can add that fun flower on before we get to the doing all the black. So we can stop and over here on the side, we can mimic a little bit of what Mrs. Moroso has going on there with a flower. Looks like it's just a pattern that she has on her dress. And remember, she just loved those quick sketch-like movements. So a yellow, blob of a circle almost and nothing too fancy i mean look at hers like it's you can see the brush strokes you can see the energy it's like she's at um in her studio with like a palette and maybe a paintbrush we don't know all the details that are going on there's a little bit of green and then i'm going to pick up that black and i'm just going to go right around it now i would spend a little bit more time coloring this in than what I am right now. It does not have to be solid, but something along this lines to color that in. And the same thing with the hat, color all of this in. And then we're gonna put our black to the side and we're going to do the hair. And the same thing with this gentleman. He would just get a very formal we could come down neck. And then just color it and you can give him a flower on his lapel here if you would like that as well. Okay, so hair. Here's how we can do that. We can, you can, oh, see I was about to use this. This is slate gray, that would not look good. All right, here's my brown that I was looking for. All right, now if you wanna add in eyebrows, you can do that, but again, if we just get these major features, I think it's gonna look great. So our hair is coming out from underneath her hat. We're gonna swish it over here to the side. We're gonna let it come down over her ear a little bit, swoop past her eye, like so. Maybe she had a little curl right there. She's got some kind of goat swooping over and we see it swooping down on this side as well. And I see brown, then this black tie, and then I see some more of her hair in the background. So we can put some more hair over here. And we wanna make sure to get the hair all the way to the neck. If we, we've got our black on there, but we can make sure that you've got that, that we don't have a a gap in her hair. All right, so then there's her hair. And remember, our hair has more than one color, you know, or like highlights, and it may not be a big contrast, but a lot of times when we're painting, remember how the way that the light plays with the different things, and when the light shines on it, it's going to be lighter on one side and darker on another. She almost looks like she's got this yellow-white mixture going on here with some light hitting her face. So it is great to mix those colors. So maybe I'll put a little bit of black here in her hair as well. Okay, now to do the male's hair, then let's get our color. All right, so for his hair, his hair is gonna come down like beside his ear. We can give him a little sideburns right there. It's gonna come up. It's gonna be sticking out, kind of sitting on top of his ear. 
and then we can have it sticking down out of his hat. That could be some straight hair, or maybe he has curly hair. So you do some swirls like that. I don't think you would have a hairstyle like this, half curly, half straight. This is just to demonstrate how you could do your hair, curly or straight. And remember, different way the light's hitting in there, you can do different blending of colors like so. All right, okay. So you've got everything filled in. Pretend like we've got all that filled in. He's got his flower right here. Then you can take your cup of water. You can dip it in to your jar and you start with the face since it's the lightest color and just kind of blend the facial colors together. This is not a watercolor paper, so it cannot take a ton of water but it's really a fun paper because I love how it kind of gives this old feel to it. And it's very reasonably priced to get such a large sheet of paper and working with so many students. Then we could do his hair. Now, this is where we can pull in a little bit more of her self-portrait and bring a little bit of that color, that playfulness over to the side. So when your brush is touching this, it's actually picking up some color. So you can kind of Play with that on the side if you want. And then start up here with a black and blend that together. See how that's blending together? So it doesn't have to be completely painted in or uh, colored in with your oil pastel. And then you can use some of that black to kind of play around. And then you're just gonna work all, your, all the way down with your water. And then after the artist is finished, make sure to sign their work. So have fun with this one because look at all the energy that she has in hers. Similar in the size of in the angle that they're looking at here. All right, where's my other one? Okay. So have fun with Mrs. Berth Morisot. Morizot, Morizot, sorry, I didn't take French. Um, and doing your portraits. And check out the resources. See, this one's not quite finished. We've got to wake it up with some water to have these visual aids. So have fun creating your portraits this week, looking at the wonderful impressionist artist, Mrs. Morizot.